Okay, so today we shall discuss about four very important examples of metric spaces. And if you people, as I said earlier, if you people try to understand them fully, then you will be able to by yourself only uh, to explore other metric spaces. Okay, so without any more delay, let's come to discrete metric. Now, look at this metric here. What this example is saying, if the points are different, let the space may be anything, it's just non-empty space, and if the points are different, then the value of the metric will be 1, and if the points are equal, then it is 0, okay? So it means, intuitively think, if the two points are equal, then the distance between them is 0, that's okay, but it is saying that if two points are different, different then the distance is fixed to be one okay even if the even if two points are at distance of five units then also we shall write it as one okay now to prove that this metric along with any set x forms a metric space first of all positiveness is by definition because it is either zero or one so it is obviously greater or equal to zero and exactly equality occurs only when both of the points are same and for symmetry if the points are different if the points are equal then there is no question of symmetry but if the points are different then also x y is one and y x is also one because both the points are different then whatever the points are, whatever they come first or second, they will have only one value and that is one. Now for triangle inequality, if the points are different, then also here d of xz will be one, whereas d of xy and d of zy will be one and one both. So in the left side of this inequality, just watch here, in the left side of this inequality, it will be 1 plus 1, 2 and left and sorry, the right side will be 1 plus 1, 2 and the left side will be 1. And if any 2 or 3 of them are equal, then it will be 0 and that is the simplest case. So, overall, since this metric or this function satisfies all the axioms of metric space, therefore it is a metric space and this metric space is known as discrete metric space. Now, the most important one, and I am saying this is most important because based on this metric, all the analyses are done. Analysis mean real analysis or analysis of Rn, R2, whatever it is, all are inside this only. This metric is defined by this formula. When we expand that formula and write it more easily, then it looks like this one. And all you guys can understand, this is nothing but the formula for distance between two points in Rn. Okay, so it is obviously very, very much easy to check whether this is a metric or not. First of all, this purpose. To show the positiveness, we can have one thing that these are the square terms, okay? And sum of square terms is either positive when each of this x1, y1, each of them are different and they will give us some positive numbers here because it is squared and then they will add up and then, well, after taking the root, we shall get another positive number or they can be zero. Only when each of them are identically zero because sum of a few squared numbers if those uh, if the sum is zero then each of them is identically zero and each of the points is if they are of all of them are identically zero then x1 equal to y1 x2 equal to y2 then dot 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 xn equal to yn so that means that x is equal to y actually now for the symmetry each of the terms inside this root they are something minus something whole square so it doesn't matter if we write y first or x first so it will follow symmetry and the triangle inequality is satisfied or it is proved by cosy swords inequality oh my goodness i have forgotten to put one plus here but here should be one plus okay so this triangle inequality is satisfied by cauchy source inequality. So overall, this one is a metric and discussion of this metric is sufficient of all learning, all of real analysis. Okay. So some people can ask why to introduce this metric. 
after studying all real analysis uh, no i i want to say one thing we are taught real analysis before only so that we can feel this metric and if you guys study rudin or apostol those type of books will take this metric first and then will develop entire real analysis and i believe uh, that is far more accurate approach okay next is lp space now from this point forward we are coming to something more important and something newer concept than all those we learned in analysis from this point forward we are moving towards the functional analysis part rather than the real analysis part so lp is a set actually and is a set of all sequences either real or complex or anything such that if you take all the elements all the terms of the sequence and you take their mod and then raise them by p or any natural any number p p should be greater than one only then that will be convergent this is the thing we are required to know so this type of sequences will be there it means that this lp space will contain only those sequences whose absolute value upon raised to the power p when taken sum or that made a series then that is convergent okay it's quite difficult to understand but still we have to okay to show that which type of elements are there in lp now lp lp it is a space which contains those x in sequences such that this sum uh, that is actually the series formed by the elements of or terms of the sequences raised to the power p this one converges okay so this is actually the construction of set lp so we can take one example here xn uh, let xn be 1 by n square right now when we take modulus of xn it becomes 1 by 1 by n square and then we take then we take x this one to the power p and then this one is 1 by n square whole to the power p and then we construct the sequence so this sequence is n equal to 1 to infinity modulus of x n to the power p that is since this one is natural number n so mod doesn't require that much here so ultimately this one will become n equal to 1 to infinity 1 by n to the power 2p okay so as we know this uh, p is greater or equal to 1 so obviously 2p will be greater or equal to 2 so for for we know uh, this one if this type of sequence is convergent if this uh, the power of n is to the power is greater than 1 then it is obviously convergent so this series converges so this xn in square 1 by n square should be p in lp space okay so this is how the lp space is constructed i hope you guys have cleared it now it is your job to find at least five such sequences which should be in lp space it is very easy take a sequence then raise to the power p and then check whether that series converges or not it is very simple if you have command on sequence and series of real analysis okay now, if a ma metric we define LP from LP cross LP to R and we define that by Xn minus Yn whole to the power P and then again raised to the power 1 by P. If we do that, then we get this function and we have to prove that this function is actually a metric. Now, if P is equal to 1, you guys can see that this is very simple. And if in P is not equal to 1 also, then only then also we can talk about the positiveness and obviously of the symmetry because 
you guys can seriously see here the mod value will not change whether we write y first or n first okay or a sorry y first or x first that doesn't change a little bit but what is important here is triangle inequality and for triangle inequality for when it is p equal to 1 there is nothing but a real number and for that we can use Cauchy Schwarz inequality for each of the terms and when it is p greater than 1 then we should use this Minkowski's inequality which is written here and putting un here by xn z xn minus zn and vn zn minus yn we will be able to prove that this one is again a metric so what is important here when we are transferring from in the last example it was nothing but a point in rn but here we have moved some in some space where a sequence is treated as a point right so each point in lp is a sequence actually okay and sequence of which type such that the series formed by this type of sequence when each term is raised to the power p should be convergent okay so next one is a space of continuous function and for this one uh, if you guys can understand from this diagram i shall tell briefly and then I am going to solve it on a paper so C it is denoted by C of A comma B it means the set of all real valued continuous functions defined on this closed interval A to B and the metric which is defined here is supremum of the differences between the functions at several points right uh, which means that for this one you guys can see that this point this point here this much is the difference for this point this much is the difference for this point difference is obviously zero for this point here difference is this much only so out of all the differences we have to find out which one is the supremum okay now let me show it in pain and paper okay let me explain this con concept in, in more detail okay now first of all just look at these two functions from a to b okay now we can clearly see that there is differences differences mean let this point be x1 i am just showing it for two points and it is the job of you guys to understand the rest so for this point x1 just imagine this one is the value of g function and this one is the value of f function right then we are getting one difference here f of x1 minus g of x1 and then modulus value of that right for this point now similarly for this x2 point we are getting one g x2 here and then f x2 here right so we are getting another difference f of x2 minus g of x2 in a similar way we can think about the infinite number of points between a and b and obviously f of a and f of b will also come here like the uh, what i want to say is that f of a minus g of a f of b minus g of b so all of them will come in the set of differences like here we can take another point uh, let it be x lambda and then we can think about this g of x lambda and then f of x lambda so here again we shall get another difference f of x lambda minus g of x lambda okay so it does not matter how the functions are oriented or how the functions are here it matters on the values of the function on particular points now out of all these differences i am talking about the differences of these two functions let us call this one as uh, let it be difference d0 it is d0 let us call this one as d1 this was d2 uh, this was as d lambda 
and let it be d of b okay let us call this not d0 let it be called da and this is db so all the differences are there okay so what actually my metric here is my metric here is d of xy equal to supremum of f of x minus g of x such that uh, for all x belongs to closed interval a comma b it means that we have to consider this difference for all the x's that is all the points in this interval so what i have to find out i have to find out supremum of that now we can say we have to find out the supremum of set d where set d is this set d is the set of d a d 1 dot 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 d b okay this is the set d and we have to find out the supremum of this set this d is the set of differences all possible differences all the differences for each of the points okay so this is the significance of this matrix let me explain it in more detail or sorry in brief again uh, we can think these are two functions and we have to find out the differences at particular points between a and b like here we, i have found a difference for point x1 and have named that d1 then d2 for point x2 there are infinite number of points between a and b infinite number of real numbers are there so we shall get this infinite number of differences so the set of all differences at particular points is an infinite set so for this set all the numbers i shall get as differences all of them this difference is a real number this one is a real number this one is a real number so finally i shall get d as a set of real numbers okay and then I have to find out the supremum of all those real numbers, that is the supremum of D. And that supremum of D will be this D of X, Y. I think this is clear. And if you if still have any doubt, please go through this portion again. I mean, rewind and find this portion. Okay? Okay. I hope you guys have understood it. Thanks for watching. In the next lecture, we shall discuss on product matrix, subspace matrix and boundedness. And please like, share and subscribe for more videos like this. I shall complete metric space and in this video series I shall solve any more number of problems than any other YouTube video. Trust me. Okay. So thank you for watching. I hope that all of you will like this video and will like my channel. And if there is any suggestion or any doubt or any question, then you guys can obviously ask me in the comment section or obviously you guys can mail me directly. Okay. Thanks for watching. Good night.